since 2003. This is the Sports Source. East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Hyperwrench and by Junk Be Gone and by the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning and welcome into the Sports Source. We are here in the Junk Beyond Studios for today's edition. As always, we are going to be bringing you a lot of stuff this week since we weren't here last week. Thanks for being back, by the way, on this 4th of July weekend, ahead of the 4th of July weekend, I guess. Uh, we are going to be talking about the fact that Tennessee is going all in at Lindsey Nelson Stadium, the amount of money being spent over there. What's that line in the, in the deal about naming rights? We'll talk about that, too. Uh, we'll talk football and recruiting. We'll talk uh, Joe Milton. We'll talk basketball. There was a high school coach that uh, took a little shot at Tennessee's coaching staff. We'll explain that. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today, so let's just get right into it. First segment of today's program brought to you by our friends at the Garza Law Firm. And, folks, if you live in East Tennessee, anywhere in East Tennessee, Marcos Garza and his team of top-notch attorneys can help you with whatever issue you have. They've been a big part of this community for years and years, right here, local. They've even opened an office in Jacksboro recently, but they can represent you all over the, uh, the viewing area. So if you're watching this show, they're the attorneys you should call. GarzaLaw.com is where you can learn more about Marcos Garza and his team at the Garza Law Firm. We certainly appreciate them for bringing you the sports source each and every week. All right, let's welcome in the uh, panel for today. It's a smaller panel. We used to do this quite a bit with just three or four guys occasionally. So we're down to four today, which means everybody, I hope you brought your throat lozenges and your Listerine like John Ward, because there'll be more talking for you today. We have right over here the, the duo from 991 The Sports Animal. Used to be a duo on there. Now you got two separate shows. You got you were too big to work together. So now they've broken in. Josh Ward, Will West. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Hey, thanks for having us, John. Thank you, John. And right over here, my longtime partner on this show, Bob Hodge, who's been with me since the beginning of this era 20 years ago. So thanks for joining us. I don't want to be a duo with you. That's right. Well, uh, <laughs> thanks for being here. I appreciate it. All right. Um, on Friday, the University of Tennessee approved additional funds for the renovation of Lindsey Nelson Stadium, an additional $39 million, in fact. Uh, that brings the total investment uh, in to, uh, let's see, the total investment in the ballpark to nearly $96 million. Add in another $10 million to phase one of the Neyland Stadium project, and that's more than $105, new $105 million that are going into these funding projects for Neyland Stadium and Lindsey Nelson Stadium. Uh, Lindsey Nelson Stadium, when all is said and done, will top out at 6,100 people. Their seating capacity, you're seeing some renderings right there on the screen. And they're going to have room for another 1,600 people via standing room only areas. Uh, Josh, that's just a remarkable investment in Tony Vitello's program. Yeah, if I had predicted this five years ago, it would have looked at me like I was a crazy person. Yeah. Uh, the, the money's just wild. We were talking about baseball <laughs> yeah. uh, in college. But when you look at those images, I think it is what a lot of fans have wanted to see over the last few years. When they see the results with Tony Vitello as the head coach and the success the program's having, but then they hear about, well, the facility issues are still a challenge in recruiting. Like, one of those images of the front Tennessee has avoided showing recruits the front of the stadium because it's needed such an upgrade. Mm. So Vitello's had success despite that, including in recruiting. But then if you think about what can come with it, now it needs to continue because if you're going to put that much money into it, you of course want to see the results. But this is a long time coming in terms of the upgrades that have been needed at the, at the baseball stadium. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I think that there are a group of boosters who have a desire to make sure Tennessee baseball is going to be successful right now. And they, when it came to Tony Vitello getting a new contract, it wasn't a problem whatsoever. A right. bunch of boosters flew in and made sure that Tony Vitello got a contract. So I don't think it's going to be a problem coming up with the money. It is a lot of money for a non-revenue sport. That's a ton yeah. of money. But I do think that they have the booster backing to get this done. And also kind of projecting forward, I think that maybe baseball doesn't become a loss as opposed to maybe it's not going to generate revenue, but yeah. you're not going to lose money in baseball, I think, moving forward. That's what I was going to ask you, Bob. That's kind of my view of it. Is, are you, you're not going to be making money off this sport, mm -hmm. but are you at least making it less of a hole? You know, are, if you go from red to just break even, is it worth the money you're investing? $96 million is a pretty deep hole to be digging. <laughs> and, and I just wonder, 
does Tennessee maintain the product on the field that gets what 61 6100 people 6100 people 7700 if you do standing room only 7700 if you do stand I just I just worry that maybe since this has not been a baseball town before a college baseball town does that sort of fade do you start getting into a well Rick Barnes isn't going to win come tournament time so the interest still there but it levels out a little bit I, I to me, that seems like you're overshooting a little bit. I, I mean, I hope I'm wrong. I hope Tennessee baseball stays great. I hope people are interested in it. But that seems like a lot of money to be putting into a non-revenue sport. Right now, there are going to be people that don't like what you just said. But I will, I will go in the other direction and remind people that are saying, well, you know, we've got the best fan base in the world. We're always going to be there. We, we are going to be like LSU. We're going to be like Mississippi State. Here's the problem. Before Josh Heupel, even Josh Heupel's first year, there were games when you had 50,000, 60,000 people in that stadium. Not sold tickets, but actual butts and seats. So what you're saying is not that outlandish. If Tennessee football, now that took a lot of years to get there, but if Tennessee football can have games where there's 60,000 people, where you got half the stadium's empty, baseball could fall back off a cliff. I think that's, that's fair. Uh, the question is, do you lead a department like Danny White from the fear side of it, knowing that's possible, or do you out there just saying, nope, we're going well, boldly the, into the future. We're going to rise glorious, as they put it. Well, uh, and I, if you've got the money lined up, I mean, if this isn't taking from right. someplace else, okay, you know, softball, we're going to start cutting your grass once every month. Yeah, Sorry about yeah. that. That's fine. But I just I just wonder, does it stay as big? Mm -hmm. and, and you're right. I mean, he doesn't lead to, through fear. He puts everything out front, which I think is great, mm -hmm. but I just wonder, is this long-term sustainable 6,100 people? I think it is if you take another step, but if you don't take another step, look at Lady Ball softball. Lee Stadium, they had to put bleachers down the right field walls, right? Because so many people wanted to be there for the NCAA tournament regional games. And then you kept going to the World Series and then not winning the World Series, right? Yeah. And at some point in time now, frankly, we give away softball tickets on our, at our remotes and things like that all the time, and a lot of people don't even want them. If you just continue to be as good as you are right now, I don't think that people will show up where you're going to fill out the stadium like that. They will for the big series. We've sure. all been to Lindsey Nelson on a Tuesday night against Xavier when 600 people are in the stands, and, right? And do you schedule better because of that? Is Tuesday night no longer given over to UT Martin and Tennessee yeah. Tech? Does that become we're going to bring somebody else in because now we've got this big barn that we have to fill? The, uh, the other issue uh, that I think is interesting about all this is in that mix of how we're going to pay for this, there is a line that says $8 million naming rights. The new Sentinel apparently asked UT for comment on that. They gave no comment uh, in terms of what does that mean? Does that mean Lindsey Nelson Stadium is now, you know, uh, uh, Casey's Field or whatever the big, you know, isn't that the new, uh, Casey's is the... I was going to go you know, with Madisonville Marine Field. Yeah, okay, <laughs> Madisonville Marine Field. I don't think they're up to that level at this point in terms of the, the investment, but they may. Um, You'll help them get them there. Yeah, though. I'll get them there. Uh, but uh, does that mean you're going to replace Lindsey Nelson Stadium? Does that mean you're going to say it's something, something field at Lindsey Nelson Stadium? Or does that simply mean the new right field wall is brought to you by so-and-so and the left field... If it's the big deal, and I don't think it would be, but if it is, and you got to get $8 million somehow to help pay for this, anybody got a problem if you change the name of the stadium? Josh, Will? Uh, I don't really. Uh, I think fans would be okay with it overall if you have Danny White and Tony Vitello pitching that change to them. If it's people that they are supportive of and like, not, not everybody's going to like everything, yeah. but uh, I think most people would be behind it. But again, if the product drops off and you feel like you're selling out for not the result that's expected, that's when you have more people upset. I don't think that people would be that upset about it because baseball's new money at Tennessee, right? So it isn't like Neyland Stadium if you were to change the name to that. Right. People would lose their minds, but but I do think that it being so new money, it isn't like, we've all said Lindsey Nelson, but it's not like people are sitting around listening to Lindsey Nelson cuts on AI that, or anything like that. So if he ended up renaming it, I don't think it ends up being the end of the world. Uh, see, I hate it. Uh, I understand it's the, it is the way of the world. I, I would hate it if they did it because... This is a UT guy, a legendary broadcast figure. You've named it after someone. Don't take a name away, is my view. Uh, but 
there are a lot of people, General Neeland, has, that name has been passed down. People get it. Even the young people understand who Neeland was. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot, there's a different generation who've never heard Lindsey Nelson, don't know about the sport coats, don't know about the Cotton right. Bowl, don't know he was at UT, and therefore don't care. I think that's I the think, fact of it. I think at Tennessee, leave Neyland Stadium alone, I think he could rename anything else, and most people are probably going to be okay with it. And isn't there a way to go around this, right? Like Kroger Field isn't at. the name of the stadium, right? You just rename the field, and we'll yeah. call it... Whatever the version I mean, of Knoxville's how many people Coors Field, Thompson and yeah. Bowling are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, but that's, yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I just look at it. if it's named for somebody who just donated the money. Well, see that that's a whole argument too. If you say, well, it's not a legendary figure; it's someone who just donated the money. Well, they donated the money. Don't take their name off of it. The yep. idea was we get our name on it because we put the the money in. Yeah, well, you're dead, so we're taking it yeah. back. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right, very good. Lots of lots of money going into that stadium. It's it's an impressive. I mean, again. You knew it was going to be about 60, but to come back and say, yeah, when you want 40 million more. I, I said wow to 60. So when, when you go up close to 100, Agreed. I guess I just say wow louder. So yeah, wow. and, and if, here's the other thing. Tony Vitello better not be coming back saying, I want more money, I want more money, I want more money. They need to look, and I, and I don't get the feeling that's his deal, but he needs to be a guy that will understand when they say, oh, no, no, part of your money is this big stadium we built for you. So there, there shouldn't be anybody that comes in here and you're having to, well, we're going to have to match what LSU is offering. You already have to the tune of $100 million in terms of helping to build that program. I would, I would just remind him of that if it ever came to that. Don't think it will. When we come back, Chase Burns is out. Two other guys are in. But the fan reaction to what went on in the, in the portal was different in those occasions for some reason. We'll talk about transfer portal double standards next. we got a lot more to come. Football <laughs> after that. Could Tennessee be a top 15 team if Joe Milton isn't an all-SEC performer? That's coming up. Much more to come on the Sports Source. Stay with us. <laughs> 